They were looking for a, a young boy um, in, for the auditions, and it was hardly anything to say, uh, are you my Uncle Arthur? That was it. Um, but I fitted the bill, uh, so I got the, I got the job out of hundreds, you know, it's bizarre. Um, and I had a great week, yeah, I can remember it really vividly actually, because um, it's kind of followed me around um, once social media became a thing and people got into it, um, they was, there's a lot of interest in the old, uh, the old episodes, especially my black and white ones, the lost tapes. So when it eventually kind of turned up, it was, um, it was quite a revelation. So yeah, great memories of filming that, um, the way it's done. It's, it's done in a kind of set way, you know, over from Monday morning to Sunday night, everything is a bare bone start on a Monday morning and then it gradually builds up walkthroughs and rehearsals, etc., etc., and then costumes, tech, and on and on until it's finally filmed on a Sunday night and then it's done and you all walk away and that's the end of that, you know. But yeah, good memories of that particular team. They were good professionals, but also completely anarchic. They didn't really do what they was told. They had a lot of ad-libbing going on, but they were just so good at what they did. It hardly mattered. The chemistry, uh, you know, just sort of literally um, won out. Fantastic memories. Sorry about the cat. Clive Dunn and uh, Ian Lavender were literally youngsters. I mean, Ian Lavender was the youngest. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the really old guys were the um, Undertaker guy, the Shakespearean actor. He was fantastic. I mean, just off the scale. Um, and Godfrey. Um, but you could tell they wouldn't make old bones, these guys. You know, they'd already fairly advanced. It was brave, really, of the BBC to cast these guys. You know, they were looking for um, proper dad's army, if you know what I mean. Not just actors, you know, proper people that had lived through it, really. And that's what they did, brave, because they finally hit a, a good streak with it and then they just started dying. Yeah, such a shame. But um, it was great working with those guys, you know, you yeah. never forget it. They were a throng. And my, my funniest memory really is of the, not so much them, but at the rehearsal rooms in Horn Lane, um, where they just, you know, they tape out the floor and, you know, you just read the scripts and then they just start working around the, the various um, props that are gonna be put in there. With the f utter frustration of the production team, because they couldn't herd these guys. You know, it was a crack from start to finish. And that's what I remember, because I just, I didn't have anything to say. And I was only in the last scene, so I just sat and watched it all. Because once you're part of the crew, you're in. You know, you're in um, for that. Uh, you're locked in from Monday morning till Sunday night. You do everything together. And um, yeah, my, my <laughs> funniest memory is these people, whoever they were, you know, the production people, literally in the end, screaming at, um, at the cast to actually knuckle down, learn their lines and get it so that they could start doing technical things around them because it was pretty much ad lib. So what was John LeMessure like? Um, if you singled him out, I would say he was, um, he was a, another one who, that was hard to shepherd, you know, from the, 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 on the technical side of the, the, the production. Um, but he was just, he, you know, he, he did his thing. So that's what the, what they all did, you know. Um, ironically, we we bought a house in Ramsgate years later and it was across the road from his pub, the Artillery Arms, um, and not, not knowing, you know, we just wandered in there. And actually, I never even really thought to say that I was in Dad's Army. It would have got me free beers. I didn't, I didn't think to even mention it. I can't think of any tricky character there. I, I, all I can remember is them repeatedly having to keep going back to the beginning because they kept laughing at each other. And uh, I think that drove the production people bananas because um, they really struggled because they've only got, you know, from Monday morning till Sunday night, it's in the can on Sunday night. So it, you know, if you've got all the way to, because you don't actually get to Shepherd's Bush until Saturday morning, um, they didn't have this, they didn't have the run throughs done really by the Friday because they wouldn't concentrate. But, you know, by Sunday night, they absolutely cracked it. It was perfect, you know. And most of it was one take and everybody goes home. 
I mean, I didn't do any outside broadcasts. Um, they were very clever with outside broadcasts. They, they really saved them all up. And then they'd take two or three weeks and they would just do all the outside, um, all the location work for all the different programmes all at once. So um, it was really well organised in that respect. And I think, that, again, that was because they knew that if they've herded them all into a field, they would shoot as many <laughs> scenes as they could because they would just mess, mess about for half the day and then shoot, actually shoot stuff for half a day, you know. But it was, the, the chemistry in that is what made it so watchable and it's timeless. You know, when you watch it now, it's literally like it's, it's a, a current comedy, you know.